This question comes from Sauce Socha. Does delaying output increase language anxiety? I saw an announcement talking about some people delaying output forever, or misconceptions about the refold philosophy, like that refold is against output in general, or whatever. Um, wouldn't it be better to slowly replace the delaying output to stage 3a with start speaking when it comes naturally, as the common recommendation? Like if you start with it with short and easy sentences when you feel ready, if you fully acquired those, to, regardless of what stage you're in, and you end up saying more over wall while you still make progress, is that better? Language anxiety is definitely a thing, and the more I dig into it, fossilization seems to be a myth. Right, even from per from personal experience, which uh, which doesn't guarantee I'm right either, for whatever that's worth. I learned English without any method, just by using the language when needed. And each time I was, I realized I was making a mistake for a long time. It wasn't really that hard to correct it. That's that's going on the the fossilization part. But the main question sure. is reducing general output anxiety. Yeah, I think fossilization. I don't think it's a myth, but I do think it's overstated. Um, the, there's also different dimensions of fossilization, which we've talked about and documented internally, but haven't released publicly yet. Um, what kind of fossilization that you're encountering and some of those kinds are more easy to fix than others. Um, but in terms of language anxiety, it's absolutely a problem, but it's also a problem for beginners. Uh, it's really a problem for everyone at every stage, except for like super extroverts. And it just comes It's almost more like a human problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Humans don't like uh, putting themselves on the spot to do things that they're bad at. Like that's just kind of a a a a, um, a natural behavior of humans. Will you please tap dance for us right now? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I would love to, but I don't have a, a solid floor to tap dance on. Oh, oh sure. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. That's uh -huh. awesome. well, my um, shoes are in the shop still. I yeah. Back yet. <laughs> No, performance is hard and it's very uncomfortable. Um, and so I think that that is a problem throughout the process, regardless of how much input you've gotten. And I think there's this myth in the community that somehow if you just get enough input, you'll eventually feel ready to output. Um, I never felt ready at any point. Uh, I just had to do it. And so I do think that there is value in doing small amounts of output through the input phase, we haven't really codified exactly what that means and how to incorporate that. Um, but there, what I will say is I will agree that there is an increase in language anxiety in the, um, by waiting to stage three, just because your ability to understand the language and notice your own mistakes is, it's a double-edged sword. It is useful because it helps you fix your mistakes. It is, um, but it's also very anxiety inducing because you can notice all your own mistakes. And if you care about those mistakes, if you are over focusing on them, if you're overthinking them, it can really break your flow. Um, which is why in the earlier uh, question about making output fun, I really emphasize in the early phases of output, output when you are dealing with language anxiety, to just stop correcting yourself. Just say whatever comes to mind and don't worry about making mistakes just to get through that initial hump. And once you get through that and become more comfortable with it, then you can go back to focusing on the correction. I talked about this in my one year update video a couple days ago, week ago, whatever it is, um, where when I, like I sort of set an arbitrary point to start speaking in Czech, um, which is a thousand hours. I'm not waiting to feel ready necessarily. I'm hoping I will be, <laughs> but uh, it, like I said that basically when I started and I, I think that's a pretty useful thing for a lot of people. If you say that once you hit this point, you will be speaking can be helpful just for getting over that like initial zero to something start, um, kind of like pushing yourself, but then you do have to still push yourself. And then my other plan is to completely ignore corrections and uh, like mistakes for the first 50 hours. Be And unless it's like in the way of me saying like understanding, but it just to focus on getting words out there, getting the sentences, getting the sounds and building the muscle memory for that sort of thing, and then going back into it. And so I'm planning on completely, um, I guess going hardcore into that, just, just, just comfort first plan. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think prioritizing comfort with output is the most important thing to do when you first start speaking. Um, and just the correction aspect is, it's very important. Like you don't want to be speaking terribly, but it is something that can come that is more useful after you are comfortable with it. Yeah. It's a lot easier to take a correction when you're, you're kind of comfortable <laughs> rather than your first day of speaking to go, okay, here's your 25 errors. You go, yeah. well, okay, never speaking again. That was terrible. <laughs> but if you've like yeah, started cause... speaking, you're relatively comfortable and you like understand the corrections, you're like, oh yeah, sure. I can be sure to just flip the order of those or make sure to put this word in or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and it's funny, you know, we look at the sort of other people in the language learning space and they already knew this, right? It's just that they asked people to do them on day one, which we think is silly. Um, but if you've already spent a thousand hours of the language, if you can understand native speakers, that seems like a pretty good time to start following the advice of the uh, speak early and often folks and just like throw yourself into situations just to get through that hump. Um, I think that the overfocus on on perfectionism is a really, really detrimental to our community um, and to the immersion learning community um, and accepting that you will make mistakes. That is the reality of the situation. Um, there may be the occasional person who's able to get super far and then not make a huge numbers of mistakes and like actually sound pretty native from day one. I think that's extremely rare. Yeah, that's like the seven foot seven basketball player saying, just train hard. <laughs> just train hard and you'll be in the NBA. Um, yeah, going back to the speak early, speak often thing, Lamont has a really good video, um, Days of Days of Words where he talks about his experience doing Swedish speaking early and often for many years. And he's like, yeah, at the beginning you do rock it up and you're what you can do and say, but then you like hit a hard ceiling that you just cannot go past. And in his experience, the only way that you can kind of break through that is mass input. And so if you kind of just switch those things around, your, that mass input allows you to expand your abilities essentially limitlessly and get rid of that ceiling so that when you do that, early and often thing, which is more just late and often, I guess there is no ceiling and you can just completely rock it up and your abilities just poof, um, go through the roof sort of thing. And so it's, yeah. it's sort of just flipping that order makes things way more efficient and effective is the idea. Um, we're not necessarily worried about fossilization. Cause like, like we said, it's not really a, a one thing and it's not really a thing that happens where you just can't fix things. And it's also not really a problem. So. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I personally experienced fossilization. I talked to people, I was talking to someone yesterday and he said a word incorrectly and I was like, oh, you mean this? And he's like, I screw that up all the time. I always say this word wrong. And it's like, that's real fossilization. It happens. But it's the kind of thing that happens from thousands of encounters or thousands of mistakes built up on each other. It is not something that happens from one or two or 10 mistakes. 